The topic of Lecture 5 is platelets, their formation in the bone marrow, release, presence and function in the blood circulation. The slides I use in this lecture come from two books. One book is Atlas of Hemostasis. On this slide I show you the slide number of the lecture and the respective page of this figure in the reference book. The second book has the title Thrombosis and Atherosclerosis and again I show you the slide number in this lecture and the respective page of the figure in the reference uh, book. As we discussed in uh, lecture number four, hematopoiesis or formation of blood cells, the circulating blood cells are formed in the bone marrow. The process involves chemical compounds which are produced in the body when the body identifies that there are not enough, let's say, red blood cells or platelets or white blood cells circulating and therefore more of these respective cells must be formed in the bone marrow and released in the circulation. The process of platelet formation follows this particular outline. Formation of um, platelets from the pluripotent stem cells in the bone marrow is schematically shown in this illustration. As you can see, there are various stages during which an uncommitted stem cell receives the chemical stimulus and commits itself to the production of the platelets the human body needs. And you can see the various stages schematically illustrated over here. I would like you to concentrate on the very last cartoon here. This is compared to the starting cell on the left, the last cartoon of the cell on the right is really much, much, much bigger and it has a nucleus which has very many lobules. This particular medical illustration is very true to what researchers have seen by doing appropriate experiments under a microscopic examination. This micrograph confirms the medical illustration of the previous slide. What is shown over here is this big, compared to the surrounding other cells, the very big megakaryocyte, the last stage of the formation of the platelets inside the hematopoietic islands of the bone marrow. Another characteristic of this particular cell is a big nucleus with many lobules. There are several important aspects of the formation of platelets which are illustrated in this scanning electron micrograph. Again, you can see the hematopoietic islands and the membrane which surrounds them, and you can see the avenues or the pathways in between the hematopoietic islands and some lines which look like pieces of thread perhaps along this particular pathways. The illustration on the upper right side is a little bit more explicit. What is shown over here and designated as ME for megakaryocyte is this particular huge progenitor of platelets. This identity is confirmed by the big lobulated nucleus. When the time comes for the platelets to be released in the circulation, the cytoplasm of the megakaryocytes protrudes finger-like projections as shown over here, which find a passage in the pores of the membrane surrounding the hematopoietic island and come out in the passages. 
you can see this little blip at the end of this particular extensions of the cytoplasm. These are the platelets just before formation and release. We can take a closer look and see at that projection of the finger-like uh, extensions of the megakaryocyte cytoplasm and you can see that little blip at the end which is pinched off and then it's released as a platelet. As a result of this particular process we have only the soft part of the cytoskeleton protruding through the pores of the he hematopoietic island membrane. Therefore, there is no nucleus in the platelets. In order to squeeze through those pores and be released, they have to be relatively soft cell formations and therefore they are the second group or family of the circulating blood cells which do not have nuclei. The first family that we discussed in, the, in lecture number four are of course the red blood cells. Once the platelets are released in the blood circulation, where do they go? Most of them, specifically 70%, are found in the circulating blood, but approximately 30% of these cells are stored in the spleen. Spleen is a very important organ pertinent to platelets. As a matter of fact, when platelets are either old or they're destroyed, let's say as a result of some injury to the human body, this is where the platelets are, by that I mean now the damaged platelets, are removed from the circulation and they are processed in, the, in, in uh, the spleen for uh, removal from the human body. Platelets are the smallest cells in human blood. They have a characteristic dimension of uh, 3 to 4 micrometers. A reminder that I use the terminology characteristic dimension and not diameter because the shape of the blood cells is not necessarily spherical. If we take now a platelet which has the shape of a little disc or if you are familiar with the shape of lentils of one lentil and take a section across the perimeter and from one end of the cell to the other, stain this particular preparation with appropriate stains and look at the contents and the morphology of the platelet under scanning electron microscopy, we see what is illustrated in frame A of this slide. What I would like to point first and foremost is the perimeter of this not activated cells, which is very, very smooth. This particular aspect changes a lot, and we'll see that in subsequent slides, when platelets are activated. Inside the platelet you can see various compartments or organelles. A lot of them are spherical and they stain sometimes very dark and some other times not as dark. In both cases these compartments known as granules contain various chemical compounds which when the platelets are activated, they are released and they become the chemical stimuli to in, in bring about the functions for which the platelets have been designed in nature. Frame B of this particular slide is a schematic illustration which is helping us to identify some other aspects of the morphology of the platelet. The, the circular shape of the platelet is maintained with a bunch of concentric tubules illustrated in frame B. 
These are called the microtubules. These are very, very close to the outside perimeter of the cell and maintain this disc-like shape. You can see on the surface of the platelet something which looks like dots, but if you see a little bit more closely this particular section, that particular pie slice missing, you see that these particular dots, actually, they are the beginning of little tubes or um, extensions of the surface of the platelet, which extend into the cytoplasm but do not perforate. These particular extensions of the surface are very important and we're going to see its role in the subsequent slides which deal with the function of the activated platelets. The next two slides are artistic renditions of the morphology of a, pla a not activated platelet. There are two different sections taken of this particular blood cell. As you can see, first and foremost, we have very close to the outside perimeter, the concentric microtubules. We have inside the cytoplasm, cytoplasm various compartments, the granules, which contain, of course, the chemical compounds, which are important in platelet function. The oval details with that zigzag notation are, of course, mitochondria. The green dots are um, ribosomes. And again, very nicely illustrated here is that particular rendition of the extension of the external membrane of the platelet inside the cytoplasm without perforating it. This is the second artistic rendition of another cut of the platelet. On the two ends of this oval section, you can see the tips of the microtubules, which maintain the shape of the platelet. You can see the granules, some of them very dark, some of them blue, some of them different color, mitochondria, and of course, the extension of the outside membrane of the platelet inside the cytoplasm without perforating it. This and the next slide summarize some of the organelles and other parts of the morphology of the platelet, size, shape, and anatomy. The plasma membrane is uh, very similar to what plasma membranes or the outside membrane of other cells are. The microtubuli, of course, are that bunch of concentric tubes that maintains the shape of the platelet. Some of the granules of the cytoplasm are identified as alpha granules and they are recognized differently from the others because of their content. For example, the alpha granules contain lysosomal enzymes, fibrinogen, glycosaminoglycans, Continuing the list of the anatomy of uh, platelets, some other compartments inside the cytoskeleton, they are identified or they are known as dense bodies. These contain different chemicals compared to the alpha granules. The dense bodies contain serotonin, ADP, ADP, calcium ions. I mentioned that the cells have mitochondria and they have that extension of the outside membrane, which is known now that extension as surface connecting tubules. These become the channels for the release of chemical compounds from the granules in the cytoplasm when the platelets are activated. I mentioned a couple of times already, not activated and activated platelet. 
Most of the time, and for the duration of the lifespan, which is seven to ten days after release from the bone marrow to the circulating blood, the platelets circulate not activated. But when they get activated, this is the time when we have to review the platelet function. In order to function, platelets must be activated. The question is, what activates platelets? Exposure to chemical compounds, which are soluble in the liquid part of blood, will activate platelets. What are some of these chemical compounds? Epinephrine, serotonin, adenosine diphosphate, known as ADP, thrombin, soluble collagen, and a few other chemical compounds as well. I will show you now a series of micrographs of how platelets become activated in the presence of, of a soluble chemical compound, specifically adenosine diophosphate or ADP. In this particular slide you see micrographs of platelets which were cut either across the perimeter or across the other dimension. That's why sometimes they look oval or some other times they look much more circular on this particular slide. The non-activated platelets many times are referred to as resting platelets. Here is another view of a sample of platelets which are not activated. You can see most of them have that round shape and if you notice the majority of them have a very smooth perimeter, sometimes some little blebs. Well, platelets are very sensitive cells. Even drawing blood from the veins of humans or animals will activate them and therefore that activation is revealed as these finger-like projections from their cytoplasm. Still, in this particular case, we see mostly cells with smooth or very close to an entirely smooth perimeter. This is the case of cells before they have been exposed to ADP. A sequence of responses start as soon as three seconds after addition of ADP. You can see that the perimeter of the cells, of most of these cells, starts becoming irregular. It's not smooth anymore. And sometimes many of these cells have many more finger-like projections than they ever had before. In addition, you notice what happens with these particular extensions of their cytoplasm, the platelets within six seconds after addition of ADP start making connections with each other. It will be like extending arms and holding to their neighbors. A closer illustration of platelets nine seconds after ADP addition is illustrated on this slide just to show that some of these cells have many several cytoplasmic extensions of their structure. And in addition, within 12 seconds, they start coming very close and sticking to each other, other activated platelets. This particular process of platelets, activated platelets, getting together and sticking with each other becomes the predominant observation 30 seconds after ADP addition. Last but not least, platelets from the circulation of normal adults exposed to ADP addition Within two and a half minutes, they become, all of them, activated and sticking to each other, forming an example 
of this amorphous mass and mass. After this particular stage, you cannot distinguish any more individual cells, and the cells cannot be reversed and liberated to their independent single cell formation. The platelets have completed the function for which they have been produced and formed in nature. I would like to remind you what we started with, which were these non-activated platelets with very smooth perimeter, and what we got at the end of two and a half minutes after exposure to an agent which activates the platelets. In addition to the scanning electron micrographs which have illustrated the process of the activation of platelets, another experiment that we can do in the laboratory is the following. We can collect blood, separate the platelets, that means remove the red blood cells and the white blood cells, and suspend the platelets into, let's say, a buffer. Because the platelets do not have any color, but they are there, you can see in the, uh, in the first test tube that the particular ex sample has a milky white color. Now, once you add the soluble activating compound, ADP thrombin collagen, you can see over a period of time what happens. As the platelets get activated and they stick to each other, they form this particular piece which looks like a piece of gum or gel, and eventually, because the platelets have actin myosin, they contract and they make a little piece of a blob which is illustrated at the very last test tube of this particular series. Keep in mind what has happened. We started with a suspension of individual platelets in illustrated in the test tube at the extreme left side. And after exposure to a chemical compound which causes the platelet activation, what we end with is separation. We have a almost clear fluid underneath, and then we have on the top this little blob of a gel-like formation, which are now the activated and stick to each other platelets. Exposure of platelets to various chemical compounds, which become available in the circulation of blood during normal procedures sometimes, sometimes as a result of disease, activates the platelets. And the process of forming that particular sticky blob is called platelet aggregation. What else happens when this process takes place? We have to keep in mind that the activation of the platelets may start with, let's say, one or two platelets activated. But once one or two platelets are getting activated, there is a series of events which brings about the release of chemical compounds, remember, from the granules in the cytoskeleton of the platelets. These chemical compounds are serotonin adenosine diphosphate. And once these chemical compounds are released, in their neighborhood, they activate more platelets as they go by in the flowing blood. I show you again this particular artistic rendition of the section of the platelet to remind you that we have the granules with the various chemical compounds. Now, when the platelets are activated, another very important thing that happens is that their morphology changes. What happens is that the microtubules are moving towards the center, and as a result of that, not only the outside shape of the platelet changes, but all the contents are squeezed towards the center. This particular mechanical process squeezes the chemical compounds which are contained by nature inside the granules. 
and these particular compounds find a venue to get outside the platelet through this particular process of the extensions of their plasma membrane. Having a closer look of what is happening, here is an artistic rendition which shows a granule and when the shape of the platelet changes as a result of its activation, these particular granules are moved closer to these extensions of the surface connecting system and they become the venue through which the release content will be released in the surrounding neighborhood. This cartoon illustrates that particular process, that the contents of the granules are released into the surface connecting system and they are now outside the cytoplasm of the activated platelet. The process of activation of the platelets is more involved and more extensive because in addition to release of chemical compounds which are stored inside their granules in their cytoplasm and in addition to other chemical compounds which perhaps will be released from damaged tissues or because the human body is suffering from a disease, there is another process which involves what we call de novo, which means right on the spot upon activation of the platelets of chemical compounds which are very potent activators of platelets. One of these chemical compounds is a metabolite of arachidonic acid. This is not an acid in the sense of uh, a sulfuric or other acids. It, another name for this particular chemical compound is arachidonate. The chemical compound which is recognized as the most potent, naturally occurring, activating agent of platelets is called thromboxane A2. In this particular slide, I'm illustrating a very important aspect which occurs many times and with different systems in the human body, namely that all the processes are not independent and isolated. One starts, the other ends. One affects the other and vice versa. In the case of metabolism of arachidonic acid by activated blood cells and activated endothelial cells is illustrated in this particular um, slide. Starting with this chemical compound which is, re is released by, for example, activated platelets when they aggregate and that amorphous mass or mesh of them is formed, can be used with the help of the enzymes which are provided by the white blood cells and is converted to a family of chemical compounds which are known as leukotrienes. The same chemical compound, starting arachidonic acid, by the endothelial cells, what are the endothelial cells? The innermost layer of our blood vessels, the only naturally occurring blood compatible surface. Normal intact healthy endothelium is the only known 100% blood compatible surface that we have today. If now arachidonic acid is used with the help of the enzymes that endothelial cells have, it is converted to a chemical compound known as prostacycline or PGI2. Prostacycline is a chemical compound which is released and its function is to prevent platelet activation and in addition to cause blood vessel relaxation. It affects the tone of blood vessels. In contrast, when platelets use release arachidonic acid with the help of their enzymes can convert that compound into thromboxane A2. 
what is the known function of thromboxane A2? It is the most potent activator of platelets and the more the strongest uh, aggregating agent of platelets. Thank goodness that particular compound in the uh, uh, water environment of blood plasma does not uh, stay around for too long. It has a very short half-life in the order of uh, 30 seconds. And it is converted to thromboxane B2, which is not bioactive. Let us now put platelet function in the perspective of hemostasis. How do platelets contribute in the process of hemostasis? A reminder of the process. We start with non-activated platelets as illustrated in this micrograph and then exposure to chemical compounds which are called activators. We have change of the morphology of the platelets. Keep in mind that that particular change is both external and internal as we discussed when I was showing the uh, uh, previous uh, slides in this particular lecture. Remember, after nine seconds of exposure to ADP, we have this external morphology with the extension of the cytoplasmic finger-like projections, and in addition, the construction of the microtubules, bringing all the organelles towards the center of the activated platelets. In hemostasis, following exposure of platelets to activators, therefore have, we have now activated platelets, evidenced by the change of both their internal and external morphology. What do the platelets do? They adhere to substrates and continue changing their morphology. This slide uses artistic illustration to show the change of the morphology of a platelet when it comes in contact with the subendothelium. Remember, endothelial cells, intact, normal, healthy endothelium is blood compatible. But if that particular layer of cells is damaged, destroyed, what is exposed is considered by the platelets a surface which is not compatible, and therefore they're going to get activated. And this process of activation is illustrated by the platelets now starting changing their shape illustrated here by the extension of the finger-like projections of the cytoplasm. And once they attach onto the subendothelium, they spread and cover the damaged area. And after they secrete the contents of the granules, they can spread out and in this process, try to cover the damaged area of the blood vessel wall, the interior of the blood vessel wall. The following short uh, video is entitled Platelet Adhesion and Spreading. In this particular short video, you can see the extension of the cytoplasmic finger-like projections of the platelets as they attach themselves on a surface which they recognize as not the normal intact healthy endothelium. It could be, for example, the surface of a biomaterial. You can see a lot of finger-like projections and in addition, as a result, of the concentric movement of the microtubules, the organelles of the platelet are moved towards the center of the cell and they become very prominent in towards the center. And they are, of course, uh, protruding from the cell uh, body. The next step in the sequence of platelet activation is aggregation. 
that is the process when the activated platelets stick to each other to form that amorphous uh, mass or mesh. The following video has two parts. In both cases, you will see platelets under flow conditions viewed with the help of an appropriate microscope. In the first video, the platelets flow without being activated. Therefore, they don't adhere, they just flow by on the surface of a substrate, which could be a biomaterial. In the second video, you will see now the activated platelets, which not only adhere and spread on the surface of the substrate, but they also aggregate. What is the purpose, the ultimate purpose of platelet activation at the end of the sequence of the events that we briefly reviewed? What happens is what we call the formation of the platelet plug. I especially like this particular slide because it illustrates so beautifully what a tiny little platelet does in terms of what nature has meant it to do. In this particular slide we have the section of a blood vessel from a small animal, most probably a rat or a mouse. You can see the perimeter of the cross section of the blood vessel wall, endothelial cells on the in inside part of this particular circle. Inside we have some blood cells from this particular detail, I cannot tell you what kind of blood cells they are. Let us look at this lower part of the slide, where we have obviously a disruption of the endothelium. The endothelium was somehow damaged. Therefore, a, an activated little platelet has been attached to this particular spot. You can see it's activated shape and it's trying to do its part to prevent blood loss from the circulation. Blood is a very valuable commodity. The human body has only so much of a volume. Blood is supposed to circulate in the circulatory tree inside that particular cardiovascular system not outside in any other part of the body, namely the abdominal area or the brain. Once that happens because the blood circulation has been damaged, all kinds of pathological syndromes and conditions result. In addition, we cannot afford, humans cannot afford to lose blood outside their bodies, for example, as a result of injury and trauma. For this reason, the body has put together, or nature has put together, a process by which now the activated platelets, which attach at the side of the damage of the blood vessel wall, activated, aggregating, form a little plug which will prevent loss of this valuable commodity, blood from the human circulation. Starting with this uh, slide, I will show you a series of artistic renditions which illustrate the process of platelet activation and the formation of the platelet plug. In this first slide, we have a cross-section of a blood vessel. You see on the two sides, intact endothelial cells, and in the middle, blood flowing, definitely the red blood cells, because of their hemoglobin, they are red. You may argue about the choice of the artist to illustrate the platelets as purple, 
and the other colors that he or she use for the vascular tissue. We'll call that artistic uh, freedom. The important thing to mention here is that in the case of intact healthy endothelium, blood flows inside the blood vessels and all the blood cells go by not activated in the case of the platelets. Another example of circulating blood inside a blood vessel which has not been damaged is shown on this slide. I chose it in order to mention to you that we have white blood cells and here is a white blood cell. How do we know that this is a white blood cell? Because white blood cells are the only ones that have nuclei and this particular lobulated notion is evidence of a neutrophil. The process of activation of platelets is illustrated on this slide. What we see now is that there is damage to the endothelial cells on the blood vessel wall. As a result of that, we have exposure of the subendothelial structures. We may have other cells, but what is shown over here with this particular string-like rendition are collagen strands. The platelets, some of them flow by and they are not aware of this particular damage, but the ones, the platelets which are close to the endothelium get activated as a result of the release of chemical compounds from the damaged endothelial cells and once they get at that particular site they are further activated because collagen is an activating chemical compound for them and as you can see the morphology changes and they adhere on the site of the vascular tissue injury. The process of activation of a few platelets, morphological change and adhesion, proceeds as you can see more and more flowing by platelets get activated and they adhere on each other and of course now when they adhere and stick to each other we have aggregation of the platelets and we have this particular big blood clog, whatever you want to call it, of the pl aggregated platelets. Another rendition of this particular process that shows now a more extensive damage of the endothelium inside the blood vessel wall is illustrated on this particular slide. And you can see the endothelial cells now are missing and therefore the platelets and in the flowing blood that go by, they will be activated and they will respond. The platelet response is illustrated in this particular slide. You can see a lot of activated platelets adhering on the spot of the missing endothelium and they start piling up to form the, the aggregated formation. The aggregated platelet plug is illustrated very nicely here. It becomes big Definitely, it plugs the damaged blood vessel wall. It prevents blood to ooze out of the blood vessel. But as it grows towards the center of the blood vessel, it may cause certain problems, namely narrowing or stenosis of the diameter of the blood vessel and therefore trouble in the process of blood flow. This is illustrated by a lot of red blood cells shown on the side of this slide which are now stuck with each other as they're trying to move and pass this particular narrowing of the blood vessel diameter. This particular process, I mean by that continuation of the blood flow, will require higher blood pressure. The heart has to pump harder and the force to push blood through this narrowing passage will increase and may cause all kinds of pathological conditions. The end of this particular uh, platelet plug formation is illustrated over here. This story up to this point 
the way I related to you is incomplete. I wanted to emphasize again that the growth of the platelet plug towards the inner part of the diameter of the blood vessel causes narrowing of the path through which blood is flowing. But because this particular platelet plug is unstably, unstable under the hemodynamic conditions of the flowing blood, it can be dislodged. Either a piece of it can be cut off and move down with the flowing blood and eventually may find itself inside a smaller diameter blood vessel where it can cause either another stenosis or completely plug that blood vessel and cause blood problems, blood circulation problems, or the whole thing could be dislodged, move downstream, and because now the site of the initial blood vessel wall damage is again exposed to circulating blood, we're going to have the beginning of another platelet activation, adhesion, and aggregation process. The whole story will be repeated. How do we overcome this particular problem? This particular problem has been taken care of by nature because the platelet plug is stabilized with the help of the fibrin network, which is the contribution of the plasma coagulation cascade. On this slide, the fibrin network is illustrated with all these little strings that are appear through the platelet plug and on the surface of this particular platelet plug. I hope that the previous series of slides with artistic renditions of what happens when uh, platelets get activated, adhere and aggregate and form a platelet plug at the site of damaged endothelium and exposed subendothelial tissues helps you visualize this particular process. Here I'm showing you a histological slice of a human umbilical artery. The endothelial cells on the top of this particular tissue were removed, so we have denuded endothelial surface. And after this particular tissue was exposed to flowing blood, you can see the result. A lot of formation of sticking cells. I can assure you they are and a lot of activated platelets with uh, some, of course, red blood cells trapped in, in the process. This illustrates the result that subendothelial structures and tissues activate the platelets and instigate the adhesion and aggregation of these particular cells on the damaged blood vessel wall tissue, on the damaged vascular tissue. Summarizing the process involved in platelet activation, we have to have exposure of these not activated cells to chemical compounds which are known as platelet activators. The response of the cells is major changes in their morphology, internal and external. As a result of that change in their morphology, the activated platelets adhere to substrates. Those substrates could be natural ones, specifically damaged endothelium and exposure of subendothelial tissues, which the platelets do not recognize as the blood compatible environment. Adhesion of a few platelets proceeds through activation of more platelets because of the release of chemical compounds for their, from their granules and formation of chemical compounds like thromboxane A2. Activation of more platelets results in aggregation. That means sticking of platelets one to another. Uh, and as a result of that particular process, we have what we call the platelet plug. The platelet plug is very important because it is used by nature 
to plug blood vessels which are damaged and thus prevent loss of valuable blood from the circulation system. I will end this lecture with illustration of uh, the beginning and the end of the formation of the platelet plug. We start, as shown on this slide, with non-activated platelets, evidenced by the very smooth perimeter of, the, of these cells. At the end of the activation, adhesion and aggregation of platelets, what we have is formation of an amorphous mass illustrated here following exposure of not activated platelets to ADP two and a half minutes after the addition of the soluble ADP. We have an amorphous mass. We cannot distinguish individual cells and I can assure you we cannot reverse this process and go back to a suspension of individual cells. This is the end of lecture 5. Platelets, their formation in and release from the bone marrow, their presence and function in the blood circulation.